Welcome back to the Comic Book Bullies with Nerds New Bully. I'm your host, Leroy, a.k.a. Imperious Rex, with my co-host. Yeah, it's Eli, a.k.a. Frankenberry. There you go. My favorite series. Actually, my least favorite series growing up. Yeah. Uh, and we're back with another episode. And yeah, we're just going to start this off. Like I said, a lot of shit happened this week. Normally, nothing happens. We just got to just make up shit. But now, it's a, actually, we got a cram pack full of show. So we're just going to jump into it. First thing we want to do, we want to make sure we pay our respect. Like I said, anytime a comic legend passes, we'll make sure we pay our respect from that one. Uh, so I want to say rest in peace to Alan Grant. Uh, appreciate you, Eli, for loading up the image. <laughs> At least I can put that much in there. I can do, I can do that part, you know. Uh, like I said, he done a lot of stuff. To be honest with you, I, I didn't really read a lot of Alan Grant growing up or any Alan Grant growing up. I may have read like maybe some Batman. I think he did some Batman in the 80s and I read that, but that was about it. Ooh, uh too. yeah he he uh you probably have read some of his stuff um batman he created some it, uh, it is batman. Eli. yo that's facebook jake. user that's jake <laughs> <laughs> did you get banned jake <laughs> <laughs> it's a facebook user <laughs> <laughs> um he he uh wrote a lot of batman stuff um wrote uh the famous lobo run in the 80s made lobo famous uh worked on judge dread a lot of 2000 ad um, you know, the British comics, the British invasion of comics. He, I believe, gave Alan Moore his big break. I believe. Don't quote me on it. You can Google it. Well, then, I know he, well, the little bit that I did Google, I remember he was part of the British invasion where Alan yeah. Moore came over. A bunch of other, like basically all the, like Grant Morrison, all those guys came over. Let's see. He, yes. Judge Dredd. Yeah. In the 80s. Um, taking over with Tim Drake. Did he create Tim Drake? No, that was Chuck Dixon. You know that okay. racist ass uh comic skater. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm just yeah, uh, yeah. I'm just kind. I just pulled up an article here. Um, just saying, um, how he was honored. Blah 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 blah. But yeah, basically Lobo, 2080, uh, Judge Dredd, Batman stuff. Did I say Lobo? But yeah, yeah. I, I think he's the one who gave Alan Moore his first job, like his first writing gig or something like that. So, uh, yeah. And we so, all know what Alan Moore did. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I did. I, now that I think about it, I did do some slight research on him. He created Ventriloquist. That's right. I know. He, yeah. I know he did some Batman villains and stuff. But. I think it was somebody else he did also. But Ventrilo his thing about Ventrilo nobody ever puts Ventrilo in that that weird condiment king, you know, kill him off uh, like category, kill you know, crazy quilt. Where I think yeah. Ventrilo should be it's like, do people take Ventrilo seriously? Like, could he be like a? I guess you can kind of take him seriously. I guess I don't know. Uh, you, you never know. I mean, what they've been doing lately. Um, Especially nobody ever Batman, calls him a joke yeah. villain, you know. Yeah, but I guess yeah. you could the Batman just make ventriloquist and he's just a, make a him mobster, like schizo, yeah. make him schizophrenic right. and shit. I guess you could do something with ventriloquist and make him like a, a scary villain, you know. Yeah. Uh Elamore's best. Yeah. I don't know why why it's not showing up Facebook. I can see it on here, but I can't see it up here. But I don't know. But that was Jake, yeah. Yeah. It's fa Facebook user. That's all it says. Yeah. But it's it's Jake every time, so shout out to Jake. Um, <laughs> yeah. Any anything else we got to add about Alan? Uh, just a uh, good journey, sir. Yeah, like I said, if it's a comic book uh, creator, we got we got to give a shout out. We don't do it. Who else will? I always forget y'all yeah. talk about comics. We forget too. <laughs> 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 but we try to we try to remember so every now and then. So yeah. Uh. So yeah. Now we're gonna actually these, even though we just started off the shows talking about comics. Now we're gonna switch over to the box office. We're gonna talk about movies. And Eli, we got a surprise for you. I want to see. We're gonna bring back an old classic. Yep, that old bad boy. Uh, I want you to give it to me, Eli. What is the number one movie of the week? 
it was probably nope i would suspect I would yep think, don't you think <laughs> yep nope was nope was yep, yep. that was the right <laughs> answer yep yep <laughs> Oh, <laughs> uh, you also got in there a quick one. Uh, Thor, Love and Thunder. You got Minion still hanging in there with a crawl dad saying, Your movie, Top Gun Maverick, ooh. Uh, is down there. My movie, Elvis, is even lower. So, ooh. <laughs> you <know. laughs> Did you uh, see Elvis? And, fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> I hate Elvis more than you hate Top Gun. I don't know. It may be neck and neck. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, yeah but that's all we got for that so shout out to nope like i said it came through in the summertime and made uh box i think like 44 million in, the, in domestic so pretty good you know uh jordan peele's third number one grossing movie of the, of the weekend so that's pretty good like i said it's the third movie so he's three for three right now so mm-hmm. uh i'm gonna go ahead and get this set up while you're doing your thing eli we're just gonna i'm just go sharing right out in. the link so <laughs> Are you sharing the link? okay so you want me to fill up some more okay sure yeah Lottie Dottie, we like the part. Now let's let's keep on topic. <laughs> uh, yeah, but like I said, we got a chance to see that. Well, you got a chance to see this. I ain't got a chance to see this now. Uh, what the hell, man? I told you I wasn't gonna see it. I made that post like six said, months ago. I thought you said you were gonna see it. I thought it was an event and shit, and you were gonna. Yeah, it was your, an event, but then I realized day, that. Yeah, know, I was gonna take I it was gonna I was be gonna a thriller, get, thriller night. Right, I was gonna just dress <laughs> up. Yeah, it was gonna be. What am I wearing to the Jordan Peele movie? Not nah, any of that. I was like, you know what? Nah, <laughs> because the thing was, it wasn't like everybody was talking about. Like when when uh, us came out, everybody was talking about us. It was like, oh, we gotta go see us. I think somebody ran out of theater. We all see us. But for nope, it was just like, yeah, it's cool. And so I was like, nope. And then something I know because we're the world we in now. I know digital streaming will turn around. What two weeks from now? I see you there. It's cool. I ain't got to rush. <laughs> <laughs> is the only one putting the work in? Yes, yes Eli is good. putting the work in. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we pay Eli the big bucks. <laughs> Yeah. All right, so and besides, we already know the routine, Eli, on this show. Pete, that's not everybody's first video. Listen to it. You do horror, and when a Fast and Furious come movie comes out, that's me. That is true. So we got our wheelhouse. <laughs> you know? So, but give it to me. Break it down. What go go with? I, I want everybody to listen to it. I know Eli's going to do spoil if there are spoilers. No, going on. I'm not going to spoil it. You're not gonna spoil it. No, I I'm thought you not were gonna, spoil, gonna it. spoil it. No. Damn you, Eli. <laughs> <laughs> You're I take just back gonna have said. to wait and see. <laughs> Jake, we, me and Jake take back everything we just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not gonna spoil it. <laughs> Holy all shit. Right. We got a bunch of comments. Is that all Jake though? It, it's all Jake, even though he just oh, says Facebook okay, users. Okay, but yeah. Yeah, 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 I just saw a bunch of okay. <laughs> exactly. We won't spoil us. We won't spoil us. <laughs> Get the crowd uh, what they want, Eli. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, I'll spoil the ending. Yes. Uh, the ending is credits roll. Oh, man. I gave the ending. Okay. And no, there is no after credit scene. Damn, so. At least I don't know. I didn't stay. I left. <laughs> oh, you just left. <laughs> <laughs> this ain't a Marvel movie, so fuck it. I'm out. <laughs> like, even if it would, like, who the fuck gonna show up at the end? <laughs> But Wolverine's going to be the next joint people. Be like, no. Okay. So, okay. Here's my review of Nope. Now, this is just me. Because um, uh, it's polarizing. Is my least favorite person on the <laughs> I moved up a notch. Yes. Sweet. That's, One notch. That's what okay. I wanted. I did it. <laughs> um. So, uh, yeah, this is just my opinion. I thought it was okay. It what? Was okay. I thought it was okay. Outside of this podcast, I wouldn't tell anybody else that. <laughs> I know. <laughs> this is just between us, okay, if you don't like the movie. <laughs> I've seen that, yeah, this is the best shit ever. Everyone's saying, right. like, like, this is the best shit ever. But I thought it was okay. However, it did make me think. So... Uh oh, the social commentary. Yes. Get, so you you got your think piece ready already? Because I, I know it's it's a Cinema. Jordan Peele movie. It's it's yes. a Jordan Peele movie. So think piece supposed to be flooding the internet right now. Yes, it's it's full of lots of social and political commentary layered in. It's just a just a big thick deep dish pizza of just social commentary. <laughs> um, little light on the, on the, on the, on the, on the story uh, toppings, but lots of layers of, of crust. 
<laughs> okay. The crust is thick with, with themes and ideas that it did make me think. Now, you know, so I don't know. I don't know I'll, 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 what that means, if that's a good thing or bad thing. But all in all, I was entertained. I thought it was, you know, I, I, it was a fun ride for a while. Um, it, it had huge scope. It was funny. It had some really creepy moments. Jordan Peele is becoming a master of his craft, you know, creating creepy, eerie atmosphere and, and a general sense of dread. There was some really unnerving moments in this flick. Well, I was like, whoa, you know, had me going. And I'm jaded, you know. Right. <laughs> you know, I'm jaded. So it had me a little, had me a little, you know, on the edge of my seat a couple of times, you know, and it looked great. The movies just, just, you know, see it on the biggest screen if you can, cause it's, it looks great. Um, he's definitely flexing his cinematic skills. You know, you can t- definitely tell his influences. There's Spielberg, there's Kubrick, there's Tarantino, there's Hitchcock. He, he, he's showing off and you can tell. Um, and like I said, it's layered with so many deeper themes and ideas of social commentary. Mainly, the movie is basically asking why, why do we need to be entertained? The audience, us as an audience, us as a society, feel the need to be entertained and wowed. And um, this big giant scope and extravaganza and viral videos and whatnot, you know. That's basically the, the main theme of this movie, our need to be entertained and our need to, you know, and how we view film as reality. You know, if it, it's not real until it's a movie. You know, we read comic books. We've been reading mm-hmm. comic books all our lives for decades. For some well, people. We, comic, we have. We have. Me and you. <laughs> right. Yes. And, and, right. and Facebook users. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> We've been, we, we know comic books. These stories have been real to us since, our, since we were kids. The general public, comics ain't real until Marvel started doing it. You know? Right. Because what, it, ain't a mo- it, ain't, it ain't real until it's a movie. It's kind of like how we view things, how we view film, and how we, you know, real- it becomes a different reality. Movies are another alternate reality. Uh, so- another thing I want to say, not to take away from that, but how people always use like comics is like a genre. Oh, it's a comic book thing. Like comics are not a genre. They're a medium. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like that's, that's what it is. People just think, oh, it's a Lord of Rings. is a comic book thing. Like, no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a novel. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it, so it plays with the, with, with our sense of reality and how we view reality and, um, and how, uh, you know, we what we expect from film and cinema and i guess knowing film history and hollywood history and black history and how hollywood represents minorities it, that if you i think the movie relies on the audience being aware of that to sort of help the experience you know what i mean it helps kind of like you know once upon a time in hollywood i know it's a divisive movie you know but if you don't know the history, then you don't really gonna, you're not gonna really care. If you don't know the history of film and Hollywood and the Manson and Sarah Tate, if you're, if you're not aware of that, then the movie just doesn't work. So in that sense, this movie relies on your knowledge of film and black history and you know how minorities are represented in Hollywood. They're, like um, Steve Yuen's character, he's the guy, Glenn played Glenn on The Walking Dead. He's in this movie, he plays, a child star, uh, ex-child star, who was like a part of some TV sitcom from the ni- 80s or 90s, where he was like the minority kid adopted by the white family, which was a trope back in the 80s, you know, different, different strokes, strokes Webster, Webster, you know, like, yeah, the, the, the ethnic kid being adopted by the, minor, by the white suburban family, that was, that was a thing, you know, and it was a way for, one of the ways minority children could get an acting game, <laughs> right you know um so it plays with those and and i think jordan peele is counting on the audience's awareness of that for the movie to be effective you know and of course 
there's a big strong sense of capitalism and how you know it strips our humanity away as we chase the almighty dollar so okay so it's got all these big themes but the story was a little thin all this movie is about is these two uh they're horse trainers their father was well they're the descendants of the very one of the very first films ever taken when film was invented which is moving pictures a series of moving a series of still photos projected which creates a moving image there you go film one of the first film images was the black jockey on the horse riding um riding a horse um they are descendants of that jockey so and they run this horse training this horse training farm in hollywood they they rent out horses for hollywood movies their business is sort of failing um they're 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 you know they're down on their luck but then there's some weird thing happening in the sky that they said you know what let's film it and get proof of ufos and we'll get rich that's essentially all this movie's about and it the journey there is just layered with all these ideas and things you know these different you know commentaries happening throughout the movie but that's all it is is them trying to film this phenomena in the sky um and i think for me what was disappointing is the big reveal at the end um is it a ufo is it an alien is it something else that's what i'm not going to spoil but whatever it was i was like left thinking is that it you know so that was me you know and i know that might have been intentional because i think it was intentional i think jordan Peele was intentionally saying i'm not really going to let let you know okay. what it let is let me let me ask you this. did it go against what you thought it was going to be um no not so much i just want here's the thing i think and that might have been maybe he was playing with our expectations because this movie is about scope you know and our need for giant big entertainment you know so we went in thinking this big extravaganza and we get left with re what the reality of it really it's just that you know because that's what movies are movies are a magic trick you're only meant to see what the filmmaker wants you to see you know and the, them trying to capture this image it was just going to be a representation of what they caught and not the real the reality of the subject i don't know if that gets a little see this is deep you're getting deep <laughs> <laughs> you know um but my thing was the design that's my biggest disappointment the design of this thing i was like that's that's what you went with you got this big huge budget see i watch a lot of horror movies i watch a lot of horror flicks some movies they ain't got the biggest budget so their special effects tend to lack so they have to dress the movie up in storytelling and and creative ideas to well to, like steven spielberg with jaws i mean it yeah. was just a fan just a guy on a fan that was it yeah <laughs> he didn't show the he didn't show the shark for half the movie because the shark wasn't working so he had to mm -hmm. go hitchcock and rely on tension and suspense and that's basically what made the movie because he was trying to show the shark a lot more it would have been a schlocky b roger corman flick had the shark worked the way he wanted it to and it didn't so he had to creatively solve the problem and I think a lot of horror movies do that. They don't have the budget they want, so they they rely more on character and story and and you know to to to, to you know to the meat of the movie. But here's Jordan Peele's got that budget. He could have fucking <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He could have made something really cool. And when I saw this thing, I'm like, really? That that's that's what it is. Right, that's, this ain't that, Sleepaway Camp three. This is you know, a big summer uh, blockbuster, right? Yeah. So in, in in a sense, there was like an M Night Shyamalan sort of thing where you're, you know, The Sixth Sense was awesome. It was his first movie. It was awesome. It blew all our minds. And then every movie after that has just been, oh, is that is that it? Is it that it's really? not Sixth Sense, right? Yeah. Yeah, and and yeah, and I think that's what Jordan Peele like. Get out, out like the a, gate a was, victim of their own success, basically. Yeah, get out out the gate, blew our minds. And now, now every time we go, we're we're expecting that big wow, 
that big I giant mean, reveal. How, at how the can end. you? Because, like I said, yeah. honestly, in my opinion, Get Out is one of the smartest scripts ever of any movie to me. Yeah. And so, um, so I don't know how. I guess he's a victim of his own success. How can you compete with that? And I think, and see, that's the thing. I'm wondering if he's like aware of that. Like, I think that's why I think it's intentional that he purposely left it ambiguous because there's no way he can live up to that. I think he's actually questioning his own role in horror. You know what I mean? In the horror genre, black horror, because you got to know, like ever since get out, there's been all these like knockoff imitations of it's black horror. We got Chris Rock doing a shitty saw movie. We had shitty right. candy man. Mm-hmm. We've had, you know, that, you know, we've, we've had some of these black horror movies that are that just wouldn't okay. get greenlit unless, yeah. you know, yeah. he came out with Get Out. Yeah. I just watched this movie called Karen. Piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> but it's called Karen. You know what it's about, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and, but it sucked because, you know, they're trying to ride off Get Out success. And I think he's aware of that. And he's sort of, um, Playing, playing with the audience's expectations. Facebook user, he liked Candyman. Oh, oh, yeah, um, I was about to say that. Oh, I, 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 I disagree. I thought it was okay. My big beef was all the kills were off screen. Was it PG thirteen or something? Or? Uh it, it should have been because the kills were off screen. <laughs> <laughs> you mother effer! <laughs> Everything happened off screen. I'm like, no, let, I'm like, hey, what, what, no, hey, cameraman, give me the camera. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Facebook user also has another question. A, a, a question that needs answers. They do ask that he, question. There's act because again, he's aware of the audience, um, knowing about aliens. Like aliens are, you know, a government conspiracy. Or are they aliens abducting people and doing anal probes? Or is it something else? He actually asked that question in the movie. And one of the characters in the movie actually says that, the thing about anal probes, you know. Uh, so, yeah, like he, he's expecting the audience to know the genre, you know. But I think my expectations of this movie was, I think I was expecting a get out. I was expecting like a big mind-blowing um, sort of, idea or or, or, uh, or especially concept. since people were already kind of let down by us not saying us was a bad movie i like us but yeah, us, us wasn't was get fun. out i don't think i don't think anybody say us was get out like they were on the same level no so people I mean, were thinking uh, that okay for the third one he's gonna bounce back you know come yeah this had more this was more in the in the sense of uh us where it had again a lot of big ideas and expressing all these you know social commentaries but the story was kind of thin that's what this is a lot of big ideas, but, you know, the story was a little lacking. It kind of reminds me of the new Matrix, you know, where the new Matrix Ooh, had a lot to say. That's not, yeah, that's it, not a good... <laughs> Yeah, it had a lot to say about society and the world and our current, you know, problems and what goes on in our current society. The, but the new Matrix had a lot to say about that, but the story was a little lacking. It didn't become a movie until yeah. they decided to go save Trinity. That's when it became the movie, you know. Right. Other than that, like Storm the you know, Tower killed Dragon. That movie, shit, yeah. 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 I mean, it, it was more, it had more, it's like it was trying to, it had more to do with trying to tell us what it was about than actually being about something, if that makes sense. You know, mm. it, it, like the story wasn't there, but hey, I'm trying to express all these ideas about our world in, in this in this movie, and you know, so it got a little pretentious without being entertaining. I guess that's what I mean, you know. Um, but there was some entertaining parts. Like I said, he can create a great mood, some creepy atmosphere. There was some funny, a lot of funny scenes. It's just towards the end, I was getting a little ants. I started feeling it towards the end, you know. Like, okay, what mm-hmm. is this thing? And then, then is that it? That's all it is. Um, so yeah, I mean, all in all, I'll, I'll I guess I'll give it a three point five out of five. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's Seven not out of ten bad. for those trying to do math at home. So yeah, yeah I, I'm, I mean, I I wasn't particularly wowed by it like some people are. Um, yeah, some people it, just slapping ten out of ten, eleven out of ten is on oh, it. It's, it's Jordan amazing, Peele, yeah. and it's and yeah, and I'm sure they're gonna come out. It does have the capacity to be about people write all these think think pieces and. You know the, the cinema, cinema, 
you know <laughs> right and people yeah. were doing it with us also like what does it mean what does it mean yeah. just what i think it mean us didn't need all that shit us was just uh homage to slasher flicks that's all it was yeah. and maybe some this old is, movies like yeah, yeah you know this is an homage to like aliens like close encounters x-files you know like b monster movies Basically. Right, but people trying to say what does it mean about our society? What is George trying to say? He he's telling he's not trying to say anything. He's telling you what he's saying. Yeah, <laughs> this last and movie, that, the main guy's name was Jason. Yeah, Shit. and th- and that's and I think that's that's where it suffers. I think it's it's more the movie's more concerned about expressing all these ideas, abstract ideas about our society than than the story, the actual so story. So people are going to go in there just digging for meaning that may or may not yeah. even be there. You know, oh, and you can do so that. Smart. You see, here's the thing, Eli. The movie's too smart for you. They're going to say. <laughs> They're going to say right now. <laughs> I can see that. And the thing is, <laughs> no, I get it. I love a great. Give me all the fucking social commentary. The deeper. Let me read between the lines. All I want. I love that shit when a movie can do that. But also entertain me. You know, mm-hmm. entertain. Be cool. Have a cool story. Don't just be a Food pretentious artist. Yeah. And medicine. Got to have yeah. both. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I love, like I said, it made me think. It just left me thinking, eh. <laughs> 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 but that's just me. That's just me. You know, I like I said, you might like it. You, you could, you might like it. You know? So we, we'll see. We'll see. Jake might like it. it. Yeah, Jake might like you like Candyman, yeah, so Jake. shit. Yeah, if you like Candyman, <laughs> might you might be right like up the alley. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then Jake gonna write like a thousand think pieces on yeah. it. Just what it means. The most brilliant right. movie ever made. And you could probably <laughs> say that. Like I said, it has enough, you know, deeper messages planted in without. It's deep enough where you can do that with this movie. You know. It's just storyline was a little lacking. So okay. All right, so other stuff that happened this weekend, we're just going to jump right into it. We also talked about San Diego Comic-Con. Uh, they dropped a whole bunch of shit. This was the whole weekend, and, of course, Hall H drops some stuff also. Hall H is the thing that everybody waits on, you know, because Hall H is the thing where they actually come out and they announce everything. It's the new movies coming out for whatever, whatever, whatever. And basically, got to boil down, who won San Diego Comic-Con? Because, it, of course, a bunch of people were there, oh, was but it's it only game? two people we care about. I, I, it, was a, it was a game. So it was a fight? <laughs> Yeah, it's always a fight. <laughs> Everything is competition. It's tribalism. <laughs> so Coke and Pepsi, Nintendo and Sega. Yeah, it's always a fight. Yeah, so that's the thing right now. So everybody wants to know who won. Was it who won? Marvel or DC? Whoever else showed up at Comic Con, I don't really care. It's between Marvel and DC. And so, of course, Marvel came out Phase Four, Phase Five, Phase Six. This is Kevin Feige came out. Look, this is what we're doing for the whole uh, rest of the decade. Have yeah, it. Yeah. Boom. I know I know how y'all shit on Thor, but guess what we're doing now? <laughs> right. <laughs> but you got Thor 5, so it's going to be even better. You know? <laughs> you like Thor? We've got 20 new movies coming out. <laughs> <laughs> For the people that did like Thor, you know. But at the same time, regardless of what you thought about Thor, at least they announced what they got coming on. DC showed up in San Diego Comic Con. What did they announce? Shazam and even come Shazam. on, man! Fucking the Rock I, just whipped out his dick in front of everybody and like they oh. booed him. <laughs> they booed him at Comic Con. <laughs> oh, really? I just saw yes, like, the picture. Yes, they. <laughs> you know why they booed him at Comic Con? Y'all, because of what? No, we didn't do this. We didn't do this. Comic book bullies did not get involved in this shit. But every other YouTube podcast, Facebook site jumped on the bandwagon. Henry Cavill is coming at Comic Con. Henry Cavill is going to announce five new Superman movies. He signed a trilogy. He's going to be there. Didn't even fuck the show. And Rock put this shit on himself because Rock tweeted out, and don't worry, Superman. I love Superman and I know how to listen to the fans. So when he showed up without Henry Cavill, yeah, they booed the Rock. Get the oh, fuck dude. out of here, Rock. So, yeah, so <laughs> Rock fucked up. Yeah, you did it to yourself, Rock. You should just kept your mouth shut. Didn't say anything if Kim Cavill was going to show up because you're making promises that your ass can't cash. You you wrestle and you don't know this shit. So, yeah. But here's the thing. Henry Cavill was supposed to be, well, according to the internet, according to Deadline. Here's the thing about this. People keep saying, well, Deadline said it. Deadline didn't say it. What people do is that they'll make a meme and then put de- and then tag Deadline in it. <laughs> source deadline deadline never said this shit fake so news. y'all just it's fake news people just run off with this shit and then sit they never said it you know 
But here's here's the thing why I think I Superman. Know. I just saw the picture where it's all smoky and lightning coming out of his hands. I'm like, <laughs> oh shit, that looks kind of cool. It did look cool, but if you hit the crowd, they booed his ass. <laughs> we don't want your ass. We want Superman. <laughs> but nobody here's the thing. Hate, I nobody think... hates DC more than DC. <laughs> <laughs> I need it. I need to make a t-shirt of that. I'm gonna make a t-shirt of that. <laughs> All right. But I think I have an idea why Superman wasn't there. Eli, do you follow the January 6th hearings? Uh, not really. I mean, I read about I, I get a, I, not really. I nobody know cares. I, I'm aware of nobody's. It. Yeah, no, everybody knows he's going to get off. He's going to know. Nobody's yeah, going to get arrested. Yeah, nobody's going to get Yeah, Trump 2024. Just let me know when he runs again 2024. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah, but he's going to run thing again. Is, he's going to become president again. We're fucked, so yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah. But for those that did watch the, this weekend of January 6th hearing, uh, apparently somebody went viral. That Apparently Clark Kent showed up at the January 6th hearing. That's why he didn't show up at Comic-Con. So, yeah, if you zoom in on the right, not the guy in the middle with the bags on his eyes, the guy on the right. <laughs> uh, so he went viral. Everybody was talking about him. Oh, is that Clark Kent? Was he doing that? So that's the reason Clark Kent didn't come to Comic-Con because he had an assignment for Daily Planet. So that he didn't come to Comic-Con, the same reason I didn't come to Comic-Con. We had to work that weekend. So there you go. <laughs> so And the thing is, there were so many thirsty tweets about, you know, uh, hot Clark Kent and all this shit like that. Before you get hot in the pants over high clark kent remember he's at the january 6th hearing so you probably know who we voted for so <laughs> keep it in your pants <laughs> what do we got here uh facebook user i had a guy that's saying i had to get my guy the same way I wrote it who is your guy i don't know my guy the same way I, wrote oh, I guess the rock i guess mm -hmm. She hooks really? to look bad. Yeah, she looked bad. Yeah, we're, we're not going to break down every single trailer because oh, she hooks to look see, bad. See, now we disagree. I think she what? looks awesome. <laughs> no, I'm talking about the look, the look <laughs> of the character, not the show itself. I still don't like oh. the CG. That's what I'm saying. The show itself, I'm all for. Come on, you, you like the CG? Uh, uh, no. Nah. Uh, especially next to Hulk, because Hulk CG still look good. I'm like, why does Hulk CG look good and her CG still look bad? I don't get it. I don't know. That's just me. I'm um, excited for that. That's probably one of the few things. I don't give I, I don't give a shit about Agatha, but I'll watch it. <laughs> Nobody gives a shit about Agatha. Why are they even a thing? I'm pretty sure it's going to be like a Halloween thing or whatever. <laughs> I forgot they even announced that you just said that. But yeah, I'm excited for She-Hulk. Kid Hoodie got put down. Oh, yeah. Kid Cudi did oh, get booed because of that. that. Yeah, yeah, I heard about that. Yeah, he did. Oh, but like Kanye shit on him first. We're not gonna talk about that, but that, that was fucked up too. Um damn man, people audiences are getting pissed. You know what? Nope gets a four out of five now. Because I get whoa, what he's no, saying. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> wait, audiences oh, are fucking asshole. <laughs> <laughs> there need to be entertained. It's shit. like a light bulb just went off your head. Now I get I it. I get what he's now saying I now. I get it. <laughs> I get it. Jordan <laughs> Peel is a genius. He's a genius. <laughs> Best movie ever. <laughs> Real cinema. cinema. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what are we talking about? So yeah, that's what's going on right now. So uh, all the trailers, like I said, a bunch of trailers. Daredevil got announced. Daredevil is going to be announced with 18 episodes. I'm, I was excited for Daredevil until I saw 18 episodes. I'm like, whoa, I don't know if I had that much that's time. That's like a that CW shit. season, man. That's I a CW about... season. I'm like, I don't know, man. I, you gave me 12, I'm all in, you know, but 18, I I'm, I'm still there. I'm still there. I'm just saying. Oh, shit. He ain't going to have like a stun and in high school is he <laughs> <laughs> right <laughs> I'm like how you gonna make that work like they you resident daredevil? evil this shit are they <laughs> kevin feige was like you want daredevil stop asking for fucking daredevil here you go <laughs> he's in this he's in she hulk he's in everything so yeah, yeah. Uh, none of those episodes are gonna be flashback of when he was a kid <laughs> that's what i want it's gonna be like arrow and shit <laughs> Oh man, yeah. Uh, what else happened? Oh, and the big trailer came out. Was it two? I think it was just one trailer, two trailers, just one trailer. Yeah, she one trailer. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm talking like another movie trailer, but I think that, yeah, it's only one movie left for the rest of the year. So, Black Panther was announced. Black Panther two was announced. What? I'm sorry, not Black Panther two. Black Panda, Wakanda forever. Let me go ahead Black and put that Panda. little. Did I say? I think I said. You know what? Somebody got on me last week, and I kept saying Camilla is Kamala. So. And Eli, you never corrected me. I said that shit the whole episode. 
You're like, fuck them. Let us just talk. <laughs> man, I'm, I'm not great. I'm not like your fucking dad. <laughs> right. Say what you well, want. Man. Actually, well, actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't be surprised if he did do that. You know, uh, if regarding <laughs> that release, yeah. Uh, but they didn't. They didn't actually show the trailer. So yeah. Um, but yeah, let's talk about the Black Panther two trailer, Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Everybody been doing reaction breakdowns and shit like that. Everybody was telling me, so I just want to do like a deep dive since we're not doing actually with live reaction. We're gonna deep dive breakdown some stuff in the trailer what I saw and talk about it. So first thing we're gonna talk about is the beginning of the scene. The beginning of the scene, they're all dressed in white and they're dancing. People don't know what that is. It is a funeral. I don't understand why people keep thinking it's something else other than what it is. It is a funeral for T'Challa. So yes, T'Challa passes in the movie people keep saying i don't know if people how aware of some african tribes they wear those shells those those like little shells that that signify tears like they will just and the more more and i think shuri has that i didn't get the clip but shuri has that in walking down there the more the more shells you're wearing the more sad you are like the more signifies how much how many tears you're you're gonna shed right so i heard people saying oh is it a wedding like no it's a funeral yeah. You know, but that being said, Eli, now we, I've, I've been talking to the black community. We have come to a conclusion of what the dress code would be this time. And like I said, we had a dress code for the last movie. Now we had a dress code for this movie. So last movie was all black. You know, this movie, all white. So Eli, go ahead and start shopping for your all white uh, outfit right now. You know, you might catch it on sale before time. But I don't, <laughs> yeah, so everybody's coming all white <laughs> for this outfit. But I don't know how it's going to work when you got popcorn. And, and Pepsi yeah, in your man. hand. I'm gonna, get, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get that shit stained. <laughs> oh, and even just sitting on the seat, sitting on the seat, you stand up, and, and your ass is all brown and shit. You know? Yeah, the fucking my my but my, my little my, the cuffs and my bottom of my pants and, and those movie yeah. theaters. Okay, screwed. yeah, this sounds like a bad idea. So I tell you what, Eli, I'm gonna run this up the flagpole back to the black. So I might have to get white drawers because I don't got any white drawers. <laughs> see through that shit. <laughs> oh, he's gonna be dangling, just walking in. <laughs> No nah, man, at my age, me, nah, me, my just age, the dick right in front of me. <laughs> yeah, man, at my age, I'll be sitting on him like, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that doesn't sound like a good idea. Uh, you can't wear white after Labor Day. Uh, yeah, that's true. You can't wear white after Labor Day, but it's a little bit after Labor Day. So yeah, so we'll come to it. maybe eggshell. We'll come up with something else. You know? <laughs> cream, uh, cream. There we go. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, but that's what's going on right now. So like I said, it is. So, a matter of fact, I actually read a synopsis. It confirmed that Chala has passed. So, everybody's making up these fan theories, what they think it's going to be. No, you're wrong. The Chala has passed. It's after the blip. This is after Thanos got beaten, stuff like that. See, we don't know how he passes, but they're saying that's what's going on right now. Let's see what we got going on right here. Oh, so do you think this happens between the blip? No, I don't. I don't, but plenty of other people do. Even though the movie in Endgame said Shuri was dead. Doing it, she got blipped too. So I don't know where they're coming up with this shit. Oh, well, you don't know that they said it. So I don't know where Who they keep was up with that? this weird Avengers shit versus X Men or what the fuck? A versus X. Was yeah, AVX. Yeah. Where Namor flooded Wakanda or some shit. Yep. Right, look, right here. You got. I can't hear myself, but yeah, that's it. So that's the scene right there. AVX where Namor flooded Wakanda. So in the actual movie, that happens. So I don't know how people, I don't know if people caught that, anything like that. So it looks oh, like Wakanda gets destroyed. So you think he died in the flood? No, 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 no. He dies before oh. this. Yeah. No, oh, no, he no. Died I think, the flood. Yeah, I'm thinking he died before the flood. I'm thinking he just passed by a sickness, illness, whatever. He just caught something and died. Oh. So I don't think, you know, uh, some villain claw or Moses Magnus or somebody killed him. Nothing like that. I think he just passed an illness. And then we just go through the rest of the movie. So I'm thinking this is all what happened at the very beginning of the movie, the funeral scene. We get to it, and then we move on to the rest of the movie, where Atlantis and Wakanda is fighting some of the shit like that. Yeah. So, but there is a flood, and I do think Wakanda is going to get destroyed. So, what else we got here? Uh, this we're gonna talk about. We talk about you know Namor. So he's there. Uh, Namor. For people that don't know who Namor is, Namor the Submariner. That's why I said Imperius Rex at the beginning of the show, uh, because he's pretty much one of, if not the most important Marvel character ever. You may not like him. I didn't say your favorite. <laughs> but he might be one of the most important. Well, isn't he like the very first Marvel character ever? Uh, even him, Captain Human America? Torch. No, no, oh, they, they, he predates Captain America. Okay. Yeah. So it's either him or Human Torch. I think one of them, but I think he predates Human Torch also. So not Johnny Storm is another robot, Human Torch, whatever like that. So Namor is actually 
the first mutant in Marvel Comics. He's actually the first flying superhero of anybody. So even though Superman predates him, Superman couldn't fly. So Namor could fly. He could just leap so tall He could buildings. just leap tall buildings in a single bound. Single when Namor could, right. When Namor could actually fly. Uh he's the com- he's comics first anti-hero. He may be comics first supervillain. That's Namor. He's all that shit like that. He got his hands in everybody's pies. Ex uh Sue, Sue Storm. Uh, but yeah, so he's been AK Aquaman. He predates Aquaman by like two years. So yeah. <laughs> Uh, and actually, the Aqu- Aquaman wasn't even associated with Atlantis until like the 60s. So Aquaman was just a dude swimming on the water. The Atlantis shit came later on. Uh, what is we talking about? But yeah, so like I said, Namor has been a member of the Avengers, fought the Avengers, member of the Fantastic Four, fought the Fantastic Four, member of the X-Men, fought the X-Men, member of the Defenders, fought the Defenders. So yeah, he's been in everything. So any you can put Namor in everywhere. And the reason you haven't seen Namor... They wait until 2022 to see Namor because his rights were tied up because he's involved in so much shit. Nobody knows who owned his rights. Sony, Universal, Paramount, whatever. So I guess they they clear this shit up. Uh, what else we got? What else we got? What else we got? What is this? Oh, Angela Bassett. Oh. Yeah, that's this speech right here. Oh. Give her an Oscar for this scene in the trailer alone. That's that's all I want right there. This, and the no, goes I'm, through, yeah. I'm gonna ain't gonna lie. I actually got a little choked up. Yeah, that was that was a powerful thing, but it, it's Angela Bassett. She brings it. I mean, hell, she should have won for Tina Turner and, and love ain't what got to do with it. But and the hey, thing about see the thing, the whole tr- the tone of this trailer, it's it was like they were addressing what happened with Chadwick and right. how everyone was dealing with it, and it kind of mourns him just through the trailer, right? With the with the you know the Bob Marley song. But then Angela Bassett comes on and says that shit. And you remember Angela Bassett played Betty Shabazz. And right. I just like got shivers. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> just because what she was saying that, you know, you know, she lost everything. She lost, you know, even just think about the Black Panther movie. And, you know, you can, you know, it, it, we know that, it, that some folks will say, oh, it's an all right superhero flick. It's just another blah, 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 blah. It's a superhero flick. Eh. But it does, but it's, it's, it means more because it's, it means something to the culture. It's, it's a symbol. It's, it's, it's an idea. And I think this trailer really harnessed that idea of what we're going through, you know, in the world and right. the obstacles we're facing. and. The, 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 you know how shit is right now it's not sweet right now and a lot of lot of lot of uh obstacles we have to face and it seems through the trailer that's what wakanda is a rep, is a metaphor for that that it's being destroyed right and they're, even they're, though they're, wakanda is supposed to be like this utopia you know yeah. this perfect place and we see it under attack getting destroyed the yeah. king's dead you know yeah Whereas the first Black Panther movie was like all about hope and giving, you know, a spy, giving black folks an idea, a, a thing to aspire to. This one is like sort of taking that hope away and, you know, basically giving the problems that black people, minorities, people of color always have to face. We just have to deal with shit. But everything's going to be all right. <laughs> right. And that was a kid's on just, the head at the end. That's you just know. what the point is. And that's the thing about like blood quantum, like for natives, it's an okay zombie movie. You know, it's not the greatest zombie flick, but it means something to the us because of the idea of what it represents that we just survive. We just deal with this shit. This is what we do. You know, we just survive and deal with shit. And that's what I loved about, like just the trailer was just like, wow. Anyway, that's yeah. what I got. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but at the same time, I'm, I'm I'm glad you brought that in because, like I said, the trailer was emotional. Now, yeah. I want to address something about this recast the child the whole thing going on. Like I said, I know the movement is going on. If you want to support that, fine, deal with it. I'm not going to stand in anybody's way. But as far as my opinion on this, now, like I said, we all got emotion from this trailer, from what everything that was going on with this trailer. Now, if Marvel would have just stuck John Boyega. In a Black Panther suit, call him T'Challa, what kind of forever the next movie, and pretend like nothing happened. Yeah, they could have did that, you know. They could have. They could have, but safe I think that would have been, yeah, safe way out. That could have been a bad taste. Plus, it would have just been another Black Panther movie, 
go on, just fight Dr. Doom, Namor, whatever the fuck. You know, it's just been whatever. They would have made a billion dollars, whatever like that. But dealing with this, this tragedy that we're dealing with, especially with Chadwick Boseman, yes, this isn't Cyborg. This isn't Rhodey, where they just swap out Terrence House like that. This is Chadwick Boseman, you know, that opened the door for other minority superhero movies. It opened the door for Shane Chi, opened the door for Miss Marvel. Hey, opened the door for Captain Marvel. That guy didn't want to make any of those movies until Black Panther made money, you know, uh, and more coming down the pipeline. Even Naomi on DC, shit like that, you know. So the thing is, in order for those movies to get made, so you at least want to art honor the guy. And people are saying you shouldn't you shouldn't worry about this. He want to be recast like that. Now, down the road, yes, I, I feel like they should recast. I don't think they should never have T'Challa on the screen again. But for this movie right here in the sequel, I think it would have been bad taste to just recast and just call it a day. Yeah. Hell, it ain't even he ain't even gone two years yet. Yeah. And like I said, it was yeah. it was it was a big tragedy for the culture, for you know, for black folks. That was a it was tra- it was a tragedy. And they're dealing with it through this movie. You know, so I don't think it's in bad taste that, you know, you know what I mean? I think they're right. addressing the tragedy. They're addressing people's emotions about what happened. You know, right. You know, I mean, so we still, I mean, like, it's, yeah, because, okay, we don't know Chadwick Boseman, but the people that worked on this movie all know Chadwick Boseman. Angela Bassett mm-hmm. knows him. Ryan Coogler knows him. Everybody on this movie knows him. So when they go back to work and work on this set, they feel his presence or his mispresence on the set. And you can tell they're feeling it through the movie. So why should they just bring another guy in and just ignore that like this shit never happened? You know, yeah. I know this is escapism. I know this is escapism. It's a comic book. We shouldn't pay attention like that. But stuff like this, we shouldn't ignore. Death happens. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And yeah, we should we should separate the art from the artist and the art artist from the character. But I think in this situation, I think we're missing an opportunity if we don't address it. If we just pretend like it's an elf in the room, we just act like nothing happened. Yeah. You know? And the first movie dealt with things that people of color deal with. Like it didn't shy away from like Killmonger's character was like a direct result of anger, minority anger, you know, and that's something minorities could all relate to. And, you know, so like, like I said, that that's what that did. You know, the, the first movie dealt with these issues that, you know, we face. And I think, this one is kind of too, just because that was, like I said, the tragedy that happened from it, you know, it it was a big blow and it Mm -hmm. meant something to everybody. So to sort of, Mm -hmm. sort of, you know, gloss it over, I think that would have been bad things. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Facebook user, uh, Jake, we know it's Jake, but you're saying it's fucked up using the real day plot. Some people could say that it's almost like when, I don't know, when somebody makes a song or when somebody dies to make a song about them. You know, well, some people say that's in bad taste when you do that. You know, um, Bruce Lee. Uh, what was the last movie he did? Game of Death. <laughs> Game of Death. It's kind of the last movie because he didn't even finish it, really. But he, yeah. it, he didn't finish it, and they used a body double like to try right. and pass him off, and they and 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 no they actually movie. shot scenes of his funeral. It's kind of that would I think that was of, in bad taste. Kind of yeah, crazy. That was a cash in. That was a cash yeah, in. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, but of course, you know, th- then you get to the actual scenes he shots, and that's when it's, you see his greatness. But you know, right. I don't but it's think like it, but they, based what they did, they just they because they didn't have enough uh footage to make a movie. Let's just make a crappy movie in between, cash in on it, and then put the movie that he did film at the end. So that definitely was in bad taste. Yeah. Know? And I don't think this, this is I don't I don't think this is in bad taste. I, I, I the reason yeah. it's not in bad taste, me personally. Because I think there's actually heart into this. Yeah. They're not trying because, to just cash in. There's heart be- behind it. Because that's just reality, you know? Like, we we go through shit. We go through these tragedies, and we go through these trials and tribulations and these obstacles, and, you know, life is hard. But, you know, we get through it, you know? And that's yeah. basically what this trailer said. Like, we'll get through this. We're going to get through right. this. And, yeah, and people need to calm down about recast the child. Look, they just announced Secret Wars. <laughs> that's marvel's crisis or whatever like that <laughs> honestly when it when that's done everybody's getting recasted tony's coming back steve's coming back the child is coming back natasha's coming back everybody's coming back they are not they are not gonna put the marvel franchise on anthony mackie's back i'm sorry i don't think they're gonna do that <laughs> no. i was wondering about that i was like who's yeah. gonna they got oh a new avengers movies is coming out in a few years 
Like, well, who the fuck are the Avengers? Now? Right. Okay. So yeah, Falcon's <laughs> gonna fight Kang and Doctor Doom. Okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> you know, you know, like like at least those first movies we had like Robert Downey Jr. He was like sort of like the, the he had the bravado and the charisma that everyone sort of just gravitated towards, and he kind of right. He kind of like you know led those movies, you know. But we don't right. got that now. We got. <laughs> and the thing is, like, if you watch those movies, like, Robert Downey Jr. was never, like, in the forefront of those movies. But because he's him, he sticks out. He he feels yeah. like he's in the forefront of the movie. Just because he, yeah. he's that type of personality. Like I said, Anthony Mackie, not calling him a bad actor. But as far as a lead, I'm not really 100% sold on him. Like I said, he's got, like, 100 movies on Netflix. And none of them impressed me, you know. <laughs> but I'm excited for the New World Order, whatever Captain America 4 is going to be called. You know, that's a weird-ass name for a movie. But, yeah, but. Uh, let's just run, I'm run through some some more. Ple- oh, is yeah, yeah. Doctor Strange is Doctor Strange the leader now? Hell, I hope not. No, <laughs> he wouldn't even lead her in his own movie. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I'm like wondering who can it be. I mean, it ain't, it yeah. ain't, yeah, it ain't Falcon. It ain't Doctor Strange. It ain't right. It ain't Miss Marvel. Wong. Is, Wong it, is, Wong, is it Loki? Wong. Like, <laughs> there you go. Wong Loki? is the leader. Wong, Wong is the leader of Avengers now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Let's see. Okay, Riri, Riri Williams is in there. Okay. I didn't get a uh, picture of the other thing, but yeah, Riri Williams, for those that don't know. Oh, yeah. For people that do know, they pretty much blame Riri for the downfall of comics or like the prime example of them. You know, the people just hate her for some reason. Not this podcast, but the people podcast. But yeah, her and Shuri go back. They are best friends, besties, stuff like that. They're both like science nerds and shit like that. Uh, Riri came to Wakanda. They trade. They didn't like each other at first, but then they became friends later on. So it's nice to see that their relationship is getting picked up in the storyline. Uh, I am going to miss her dynamic, you know, because she's doing the iron pumping thing oh, yeah, like yeah, Tony yeah. Stark did, you know. Or whatever, yeah. Yeah, so we're going to miss out on her relationship with Tony Stark because Tony trained her in the comics and, like, he was a protege. Not, not taught her science shit, but trained her in superhero shit, like, taught her how to fight. Basically, she was peter parker in the mcu like how peter parker is in the mcu that's how she was in the comics but mm-hmm. you know that's 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 how that was but trained her you know stuff like that uh what else we got what do we got here oh we got tony it was something else I was gonna say. yeah this the no not that damn it i'm, I'm just skip i was trying to show the atlanteans but am i oh uh, this one so oh, this at the end of the movie there at the end of the trailer there was another black panther everybody's like who is this black panther who is the new one is it alternate universe killmonger no, you assholes. Shuri, <laughs> pick up a fucking comic. This, this is part of the storyline. So when T'Challa went down, uh, Shuri became the new Black Panther. So I don't know why they think people's going to think they're going to deviate from that. But yeah, that's what's going on with that. So um, yeah, that's all I got with that Black Panther trailer. Like I said, a lot of stuff to break down. It's some other stuff I caught also. I think I saw one part where it looked like a Koye was getting attacked by the Dora Milaje. So I don't know what that was about. Hmm. But yeah we'll, we'll go. yeah it like Ooh. that normalizing with turning on her so i don't know if if they went bad or she went bad or whatever the fuck going on we'll know so it's a real quick a quick scene but it, it was there so we'll see what happens oh um, so do you think are do you think they might be introducing doom in this flick do i think that in an africa yes. scene, maybe yes i do I think it's going to be after the scene because mm-hmm. a lot of this story is following the Doom War storyline. Doom War. But he's, yeah. uh, for people who don't know the Doom War storyline, go read the Doom War storyline. Basically, Dr. Doom tried to assassinate T'Challa. Almost got him. Pretty much put T'Challa out of business, out of commission for a while. Like, he had to relearn how to walk and shit like that. While he was down, he couldn't carry out the Black Panther, so sure, he became the Black Panther. Doom did some shit behind the scene to make it think like the Atlanteans tried to assassinate uh, T'Challa and almost started a war between them. The war didn't start then, but they eventually went to war later on. But yeah, so Shuri and Namor fought all the shit like that. So yeah, so it's very close to that Doom War storyline. And Doom did that to basically weaken Wakanda so he could take over. Yeah. So so because we are was, supposedly yeah. get we are gonna get a we're getting a Fantastic Four movie in a couple of years. So uh yeah, so <laughs> it might as well just go ahead and put Doom in there now. So and if we're doing the Kang universe or whatever the fuck, Kang right. Dynasty and in Secret Wars, yeah, you gotta, you gotta get have, the we gotta have them both, yeah. right? <laughs> you gotta have them both, yeah. <laughs> uh, so yeah, gotta have them back to back. So um yeah, but that's all I got with that one. So we can move on past that. Oh uh, yeah, moving on past that, Eli. I guess we can start with the comic books. Sure. Yeah. 
Yeah. Like I said, if, uh, appreciate everybody for sticking with us. Still stay with us because we got some more books we want to talk about. So this is Comic Book Bullies. We'll be talking about the comic books. And Elam, I'm going to let you go first because I think you got more books than I do. All right. Yeah. Um, I'll get my get my images up. Oh, not mm -hmm. me. Guess I'll do Shang-Chi. Shang-Chi. Ooh. Uh, can you do anything else? Why? Did you not read it? Or did you <laughs> I did read it. Or? Oh, I think so. Me? Yeah, because I only got two books. So, oh, yeah, because I, I, I think you have four. I got two, but if you did, you you put it oh. on the list. You read it, yeah. Oh, because I, I I looked at the look list briefly, and I was just like, damn, if you take Shang Chi, I ain't got shit. Well, what else did you read? Black Adam? Nah, I didn't. I should have. If I know you would have read Shang Chi, I would have read Black Adam. That would have gave I me another book. Black Adam, but I don't have an image. Oh. <laughs> but, but I'll do I'll do Han Han and Chewie number three or four. What is this four? Number four. Okay. I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't read uh, Star Wars 25. Nah, man. They're still doing that fucking Crimson Dawn shit that I... Uh... Oh, and then like the conclusion of it or something like that? It's like oh, issue 25. It's been going so on for a long time and I'm like, ah, Vader. Oh. They're trying to kill Vader and they're not because it's Vader. You know? <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so this is basically uh, Han and Chewie. Um... And uh, one, back in their smuggling days, when they were doing dirt for Jabba, um, they get hired to hired by uh, Jabba the Hutt to go steal the urn, the ashes of one of his old rivals. Um, but all this criminal caper mishaps ensues. They, they're, they're working with Greedo because he's the only one who knows where it is. But then they find the urn and then take off and ditch Greedo. But then while they're on Corellia, which is Han Solo's home planet, they meet, they find Han Solo's dad. So Han Solo's dad's been uh, been um, tagging along. Um, on the last issue, uh, Han, uh, they run into Black Krizanston. Black Chewbacca. Okay. He was Black made Chewbacca, famous. The evil yeah, Chewbacca, yeah. Yeah, the Black Chewbacca that was on the Boba Fett show. <clears throat> and um, he ends up uh, stealing hot or like kidnapping hot so this issue is basically very chewbacca eccentric um we basically watch chewbacca um go rescue han there's very little dialogue in this in this issue it's just chewbacca getting down going after um you know flying the millennium falcon tracking down black chrysanthemum they get into a fight they have a you know a, a, a slugfest with Chuba, uh, with you know Wookie against Wookie. Um, they he finds Han. They take off. Meanwhile, I forgot to say, uh, Chewie left Han's dad on the Millennium Falcon to go rescue Han. So Chewie goes out, goes finds Han, beats the shit out of. They get, he gets in a fight with Blackers Anston, gets Han. They escape back to the Millennium Falcon. The Millennium Falcon's gone. <laughs> dad took it the dad took it and that's where it ends so <laughs> that sounds like something han's dad would do so yeah yeah they're in a pickle so and i'm i'm just digging this series i i this is just a lot of fun it's just you know han and chewy doing crime shit you know who, who's writing it? is it charles souls again uh is it charles who is writing this sorry i don't know if it's charles soul who is it it is mark guggenheim oh yeah 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 that guy he does yeah. a lot of shit. He he like he like big time. Yeah. So and this is yeah. it's just fun. Like I said, it's it's crime shit, old west outlaw shit in the Star Wars universe that um that I think the Disney shows are a little too afraid to go too deep into. So I get friend, it, I, family friendly. Yeah. yeah, I get it. I get it from the comics. So this is just fun. It's just fun. Four out of five. Cool, cool. Cool. All right. Next book I'm going to do. Not gonna do Shang Chi. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm start off with uh this one. The reason I wanted to do a book this week, I just wanted to see where this storyline is going. So I'm gonna do X A X E Judgment. Okay. Uh, for those who know, A X E means Avengers X Men Eternals. It's a three way fight. Sounds like a lot of action. So uh let's get down to it. See exactly where the story is going. Now we got that pulled up. So now we've been reading Road to X. Journey to X, Judgment of X. This is X. This is where the X story starts. So we're just going to jump okay, into it. Okay, so it's finally getting... This is Avengers, X-Men, and Eternals? 
Yeah, they're all in it, and the fight actually starts in this book. So they actually go in. The war starts in this. All one. right. So yeah. So no more foreplay. Let's get to it. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So it starts off. Uh, Tony Stark, right there, is having a dinner date with Cersei. Meanwhile, they're across the street from the treehouse, which is the X Men's, you know, uh, uh, headquarters. And basically, uh, Tony is interrogating. She's so like, "Look, I know some shit is going on with you and the Eternals." uh a war's about to start but i need more information what's going on and Cersei's like yeah, i'm not gonna tell you anything and tony's just like uh oh, she's not gonna tell me take her and she looks up in the sky it's phoenix <laughs> and it's echo just snatches her out of uh out of the, the place and takes her into space and she's getting the shit kicked out of her by echo captain marvel and thor now i don't care who you are those three come for your ass you're done so even <laughs> eternal you know uh yeah so in the x-men's looking up they're like damn she got that uh, ass kick you know but they got their own problem because since the the information has got out that they know how to resurrect themselves all the humans want the technology also so now the humans hate the x-men even more than they did before <laughs> you know uh, and jean gray is like hearing their thoughts and she even get the thoughts of one of the uh women down there you know was upset that her daughter died you know and the x-men have the the ability to bring her back but they won't because you're not a mutant you know so like damn well, what can we do well then we can't do cyclops is like he don't care meanwhile you got uh kakoa talking they trying to figure out what's going on and destiny has a premonition but it says boom the eternals are trying to kill us they're going to kill us like very soon like oh shit let me go to mars let me warn those people so nightcrawler goes to mars and talk and find storm and magneto and cable and he tells them what's what's what cable's like okay uh no storm is like i'll go to earth because the quiet council needs to meet right now to find out what's going on with the Eternals. Meanwhile, they're going to talk with the quiet council on Mars and hash it out. Let's go from there. Okay, cool. Uh, what do we got here? We got Iron Man took Cersei back to the Avengers Mountain and he put her in a special room where psychic powers don't work. She's like, oh yeah, my psychic powers don't work, but my matter, ma uh, matter manipulation works just the same. And she just turned back into her, her Eternals outfit. And she's like, look, Tony, you, you can't keep me uh you can't keep me locked in here matter of fact with your heart condition even from this distance i can just give you a heart attack right now by the snap of a finger and all people would think like why this shit didn't happen 10 years ago she was like look just tell me what i want to know well, who are you about to fight who are you about to go to war with she's like i'm not telling you anything and you know and then that's when tony gets a phone call he's like it's not working uh i'm coming in and he's like no you can't come in because she'll mind control you you're like it don't matter tony you know the rules and that's what captain america walks in he was like look so she used to be Avenger, once an Avenger, always an Avenger. So he starts talking and he's just like, well, what do you know? And she's like, what do I know? What do you know? Because basically they know information that Drew is about to start a war. They know he's about to start a war, but they don't know who he's about to start a war with. So we get to it and we go to Drew and we find out what he's doing. He's going to like some other high council in the Eternals. And he's saying, I need control of the Unimind to kill the mutants. So do I have your permission? And they all give him a thumbs up. They're like, yep, let's do the Unimind. And they do it. So he's talking to Thanos' uncle, telling him the whole situation. And he basically like his, Thanos' uncle, U Uranus, not Uranus, Uranus, yeah. <laughs> been, <laughs> I got to keep remembering that. He's been locked in there for like 100,000 years. And Drew is telling him, I tell you what, I'm going to let you out for one hour, for just one hour. After that, the machine is going to teleport you back in here. But you commit this, uh, and you do one thing for an hour, wreck as much havoc as you can, and just do that for me. Well, I go handle some other shit, you know. So he's like, and that's when you got this cool ass picture of Uranus. He's like, Uranus, the undying. Watch what I do with an hour. That's what she said, you know. Uh, we go to <laughs> Morgan Metagger. Yeah. So Morgan Metagger and Drew is just talking it over. They're like, so how are you going to kill the mutants? You're like, I'm going to show you. And he basically breaks down his plan while the plan is happening during this hour while Uranus is doing his old fucked up shit. So you got Wolverine Gold Balls playing volleyball and the choir council is talking. This is like, well, what the hell is going on? Where's Mr. Sinister? Mr. We ain't seen Mr. Sinister in months, you know. And while they're talking, that's when they all get the psychic attack and the Unimind is over Krakoa and the Unimind is about to kill everybody on, on the country. That's when all the psychics in the X-Men will go into teleport you know psychic mode like gene gray and hope and emma frost and professor x and they go to battle with the unimind so human eyes can't see this battle but it's a mind battle that you know nobody else can see you know but so that means all the telepaths are out of play 
which means the regular Eternals can go to work. So they got actually battle armor on right now, and they just start fighting the shit out of them. And this, they just start fucking up mutants, you know, and they call the X-Men. The X-Men teleport from New York from Treehouse, teleport everybody. Um, oh, and then while the Mars Choir Council is talking, they get attacked. But we don't see who they get attacked by until later on. So Wolverine sniffs something. He smells something. So he's fighting his way, chopping his way through Eternals, and he see Gold Ball. Gold Balls is dead, and he's one of the five. So he's like, this isn't good, because they basically, they know who the five are. So he's like, if he's going for them, he's going for Hope next. So he teleports, and he stabs in the Eternals right before he kills Hope, and he's just like, oh, damn, you're good. <laughs> he's like, how did you even know I was here? He's like, I couldn't smell you, because you got some kind of eternal power that stops me from smelling you, but I can smell the blood on your knife from Gold Balls. You need to clean your blades more. You're like, okay. And he just teleports away. You know, and he but Wolverine steps in front of Hope to stop him from getting stabbed and shit like that. But he just teleports and that's it. So and he was like, basically, Gene, stop this un, unibrow, unimind rap battle. Get back here. They're trying to kill the fire. They're trying to kill Hope, you know. So basically, the Eternals did what they wanted to do and they left. And Eternal and Drew is just like, well, I did what I wanted to do. I'm out, you know. But somehow, Gold Balls had a backup of himself. So since he's there, they can still, you know, basically the five is still intact. And they bring back Cable, even though he was on Mars. And he's just like, what, what happened? He's like, tell me what happened. You know, and that's when Uranus, you know, is counting down and he teleports. His hours is up. He teleports back and you see a trail of bodies on Mars. So that's what he did in an hour. You know, and he just, it's basically he's just like, look, you need me because your other plan failed, but I got the shit done. You know, so bring me back and we can get this done. He's like, no, I'm not ever letting you out ever again. You're crazy. You know, uh, so we go to the Avengers and they get approached by. Oh, yeah, <laughs> this shit was funny right here. Uh, Druid announces phase two of his plan. He's just like he uh, basically hacks into everybody's smartphone on the planet. He tells citizens of Earth, I'm coming to deal with you about this mutant problem. We're the Eternals and we're going to kill them. And we should have did it a long time ago. But our bad. We're going to take care of them now. And basically everybody on the planet starts cheering they're like thank you get rid of these motherfuckers we want them gone fuck these muties you know and you're like but we're gonna need some monsters that we're gonna resurrect from the western hemisphere to kill them so if you're on the western hemisphere you might want to move uh away from the coastline and these these monsters are called the hex and that's gonna say after record next we continue so yeah uh like i said the war has started the war is going on we got action they know who the five are. They know where to hurt the X Men, and I think everybody on Mars is dead. So we'll see how it goes. So well, damn. Yeah, overall, <clears throat> pretty interesting start. I'm I'm into the this summer blockbuster. Let's see where it goes. You know. So cool. All right. So uh, yeah, what you got next? I will do. I'll do Black Adam number two. <laughs> okay, I don't have that on the list, but we can go with it. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got an image real quick. You got an image? Cool. Okay, because I didn't have anything. I was multitasking. Mm-hmm. Okay. There you go. So this is Black Adam number two. Um, so in the last issue, Black Adam got infected by some toxin that he fought. It was like a, it was like Dark Side, but it wasn't Dark Side or something. I think it was one of those Dark Crisis. That, that maybe it's Dark Crisis shit. I guess I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. But he, anyways, he got fucked up in battle and he's dying. He's got this fucked up disease. But there's this guy. There's this kid. He's like a med student. His name is Malik, and he's the descendant of Black Adam. And he wants to pass on the mantle to this Malik. Black Adam wants to get, make him the new Black Adam, and he wants him to redeem his name. So they bring this kid to Kondok. They take him. He's like a he's like in Harlem. They take they kidnap him, take him to Kondok, let him meet Black Adam, who's all in the hospital. He's all fucked up looking. He's got this disease. Um, his face is all fucked up and shit. And he's basically telling me, yeah, you're you're my descendant. You know, you I'm going to give you this power and you're supposed to redeem my name. You're supposed to, you know, I'm I'm a piece of shit. I'm I can't redeem. I've done so much fucked up shit in my life that, you know, I cannot be redeemed. But you can take on the mantle and restore the legacy of Black Adam. So he gives him the power and he names him. You are now White Adam. 
<laughs> make Black Panther, make Black Adam white. <laughs> <laughs> and he even says, "Wait a second, now, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna call myself White Adam." <laughs> <laughs> right. but i am a doctor we need to get this motherfucker to a doctor so they end up teleporting uh black adam to a doctor and he's in the fucking uh um being prepped or whatever he's in the hospital but then one of the you know nurses come out and says uh my condolences you know the shah of Kandak is dead and black adam died where, that yeah that's where it ends wow so, okay Christopher Priest kills Black Adam. In the second oh, issue. In the second okay. issue. <laughs> Damn. Okay. So yeah, I mean it's all right. Three out of five. I, you know, I you know, it's all right. I'm not well versed in the whole Shazam Black Adam, you know, lore, but you know, I thought I mean, but it's okay. a it's a new character, so it's yeah. like Chris it's like, you know, Chris Priest just go wherever he wants to with this character. So Yeah. So yeah, we get some flashbacks of, you know black adam like leaving his nephew to die back in like it slave egyptian times and shit um you know yeah. biblical times and you know of course of when he's like a, the politician you know when he's theo or whatever his name is and yeah you know, in, pre just, in present time yeah yeah and how like these american politicians are trying to like you know wheel and deal with them and he's like i don't give a fuck about your country so like, we're trying mm -hmm. to we're trying to spread freedom democracy he's like Freedom and a democracy, America. You kidding me? Right, <laughs> right. <we're> like, <laughs> I have no. I you got you guys got nothing for me. He's something like yeah. he says. Yeah, they go. I have no interest in, agenda. <laughs> yeah, I have no interest in anything you got. <laughs> and I thought that was funny. <laughs> oh, so, uh, so yeah. But uh, you that's know, crazy. That mean they kill Black Adam, even though Black Adam has a movie coming out. They kill the main character <laughs> with a movie coming out in the second issue. Like, okay. And then and then turned him white. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> America. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, three out of five. It's fine. Okay. All right. Next book I got is Batman Superman World's Finest number five. Did you did, read this? I did read this. Yeah. You did read this. Okay. Hey, really, I read a lot, lot man. Oh. It was a, it was, I, I blew a lot of money this week. There's a ton of books. Where's the book? There you go. There it is. Yeah, you've been busy this week. <laughs> All right. So, like I said, we're going to jump into it. This is Superman, Batman. This is actually the the last issue of this arc, mm -hmm. of the conclusion of this arc that we have going on, the Devil Nessa storyline. So, we're just going to jump into it. Uh, what was basically, they caught him last issue, but when Superman and Batman did a fusion dance, turned into one being and was strong enough to, to kick his ass, and now they have to make a decision who's going to put him in the tomb. Because whoever puts them in the tomb has to lock the door behind them, and they're gonna be locked in there forever, forever, ever, and ever, never. You know, so they all do the whole superhero thing. I'll do it. No, I'll do it. No, I'll do it. Super Supergirl showed them the key. This is the key you got to use to lock them in there. You know, everybody argues. No, I'll do it. I'm supposed to be the Superman. Batman's telling them, no, you can't do it because if you go over to the other realm, which is made of nothing but magic, you're gonna be as strong as I am, and you can't fight. So they're gonna kill you the moment you get over there. So. And then if you want to do patrol, I'm expendable. I'll do it. And the Supergirl like, no, I'll do it. Because, and then they're like, because of what? They're like, wait a minute, where's Robin? <laughs> and she's like, oh, yeah, I meant to tell you about that. <laughs> and then before they could do that, she gets heat vision by Superman, who's been controlled by the devil Neza, who basically saying, why didn't I do this to begin with? And that's a good question. Why didn't he just possess Superman to begin with? You know. but anyway superman is about to attack batman so we got superman batman round two no nope, supergirl catches him again <laughs> right again evil <laughs> superman you know so supergirl takes him and they fight it out they were like no you're not gonna stop me so batman and the doom patrol you know they batman's like okay you go left rita you go right follow my orders and then that's when rita just grabs him and she's like i'm not taking your orders." so now she's been possessed by the devil nessa and then Larry attacks Cliff. Now he's possessed by the devil. Nessa. So why the devil Nessa didn't do any of this shit? I don't know. But anyway, he does it. So all the Doom Patrol is possessed except for Cliff because he's a robot. So he can't he's be possessed. Yeah. yeah. So uh, Supergirl is trying to knock, take down Superman. But of course she can't. Uh, they can do this Dragon Ball Z heat battle between each other. You know, just like uh, this. But I Superman mean, gets I us. Mean, so all yeah. this bullshit. Exactly. So all this bullshit about Supergirl strong Superman. Mark Adam, Mark Wade is like, fuck that shit. No, nope. because <laughs> she got her ass whooped by Superman. 
Uh, yeah, so basically everybody's got their ass beat. Uh, Cliff is just like, well, shit, ain't nothing else I can do. Let me just knock his ass out just see what happens. I'm going to just rush at him. If I die, fuck, at least I went down swinging. And right before he gets him, boom, punches him. And even Cliff was like, wait, what? I, I actually hit him. So when, uh, basically, uh, yeah, so when she hits him, everybody that was under mind control is not, you know, comes back to normal. And Supergirl remembers what that wizard said. She's like, oh, yeah, he can only adapt. Ne- Devil Ness can only adapt to science that he knows about. Since Cliff is a robot cyborg type person, he can't adapt to him. So Cliff wail on him. And then he wails and the Batman puts on his, you know, his gauntlets and he starts wailing on him. They realize, okay, so it's too much for Devil Ness to, to, to adapt to. So they finally beat the shit up. So like, okay, we can finally take him. And, and then Superman uh shoots off there and then goes to the force of solid too. He's like, I got I got my own plan while y'all basically holding him back because what y'all doing right now is not gonna work. You know, and then it doesn't work because the devil Neza catches on what they're doing. So he adapts to both their energies and knocks them both out. So, yeah. So basically, I know that shit takes uh, Larry, absorb his negative man powers. He's like, yeah. So basically, the longer he stays there, the stronger he's getting, you know, and that's when Superman's like, OK, so, you know, Earth technology. How about you try on Kryptonian technology for a size? And he's got the Phantom Zone gun in his hand, which he does. He uses way more than he should. Where anytime he fights a villain stronger than him, he can grab a Phantom Zone gun and just shoots him into the Phantom Zone. So he tries to shoot him, shoot him, uh, and then yeah, takes to the Phantom Zone. So it should be the end, but we know it's not the end. <laughs> you know, he's stuck in the Phantom Zone. And then okay, so like where's Robin? She like I don't know. He, we were going back, and he's somewhere in the time stream. <laughs> He's lost forever, and that's it. She's like, damn. So while they're talking, then in the background, you can see a little portal rip in reality, and it's the devil Neza clawing his way out of the Phantom Zone. He has absorbed the energy of the Phantom Zone, so he knows how to get out. So they're like, damn, we, there's no way we can beat this guy. So what the hell do we do? So then you got Batman, Supergirl, and Superman looking at the key, and basically who can get to the key first? And who gets the key first? Superman, again. Faster than Supergirl, stronger than Supergirl. So there you go. He grabs the Devil Neza, grabs the key, and locks him in the doom, uh, locks him in the tomb behind them. And that's it. So Batman's just like, Superman. You know, he tries to bang on the door. Yeah, because it's got to be locked in the inside. Got to be locked on the inside. So that's it. And he knows on the inside, since the other side is magic, Superman has no powers on the other side. You know, yeah. Uh, or at least he's going to run out of powers on the inside. Then he yells at Supergirl, Why the hell you didn't do something? He's like, Do what? Stop him? Stop robbing? I'll be answering questions for the rest of my life. You're like, damn, I loved him too, Batman. I like how she said, I loved him too. <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yes, Batman, I know you love him, but I'm family, you know. Uh, so then, you know, Cliff steps in here like, okay, y'all quit arguing. Oh, like, look, we won. Let's go tell the world how Superman made a sacrifice to save the planet, you know. Uh, and then, Batman, you coming? And Batman's looking, he's like, hold up, it's not here. You're like, Clark, you son of a bitch. You're like, <laughs> And then he was like, "Uh huh." He took the Phantom Zone gun in there with him, so he's just like, "Uh." And he he remembers the rip that the Devil Neza left. He was like, "There's the rip, negative man. Go open the rip." And he was like, "Okay, I'm gonna try to, but this rip is tough. And if I don't get done in 67 seconds, I'm gonna turn back into you know regular Larry, you know." So they all try to use the rip, try to rip through him, and they find Superman, pull him through. They get him, and that's it. So yeah, Superman escapes the phantom zone you know and, and so he's looking at batman like took you long enough and like and batman like man that was stupid as hell he's like no it's not stupid as hell aren't you batman i knew you were gonna find a way to get me out of there he's like oh yeah you're right i am batman okay yeah uh yeah and he basically tell him what he did the devil nezzle when he got locked in there he took the phantom zone gun and turned it on himself to blast himself into the phantom zone and before he did it he heat visioned it right before he disappeared to stick the devil Neza in there so he can't get out, you know, and he just was just waiting for Batman to find a way to get him out of there, you know, and then, and super, super girls are like, yeah, let's make sure nobody else finds the place. So they basically throw all kind of rubble on top of it, bury the tomb so nobody else can find it, you know, uh, and then it's just like uh, good day, Batman. Uh, but I'm sorry about Robin Batman. And it basically looked like let's next it. So the next arc is let's rescue Robin, you know, meanwhile, in present day, we, I guess we go back to the tomb of the Devil Nessa and we see Damian Wayne Robin, you know, uh, and he finds the tomb of the Devil Nessa. And it looks like that tomb was built on Lazarus Island 
which is the mm-hmm. whole arc that Robin has been dealing with the whole time. So they didn't know they built that shit there. You know, we continue to Batman versus Batman Robin. Batman so, yeah. versus Robin. R- versus Robin. And so, yeah, I want to see how that shit goes. So, yeah. Uh, awesome arc. Mark Wade killed it. It's just classic. Batman and Superman is what you expect, you know. Uh, Batman and Superman, it was a nice balance. They did need each other, so it didn't feel like one was more overpowered than the other. Having Batman and Superman fusion dance was a cool little thing also, so good for trivia night. So, yeah, awesome arc. I don't know if I'll stick with the next uh, arc, because a lot of time with these books, when you get to the second arc, it starts going downhill, but this first arc, yeah, I'm all, I was all on board. So, cool. uh, yeah, what, what you got? I will do... To do mad balls, go for it. Characters? Yeah, why don't I do that? I, I won't object to that. So, Let's were see. you were you a mad ball fan? I don't even know who mad balls is, but I was oh, not man. a garbage pill fan. Kid, <laughs> I was oh. not a fan of them. <laughs> why? Because it didn't have your name. <laughs> uh, even if it did have my name, I still wouldn't fuck with it. <laughs> <laughs> um. Well, I, I, yeah, I was a fan of both of these. Me and my brother loved both of these. Mad Balls versus Garbage Pail Kids. Um, it's a comic, Dynamite, just putting out some stupid schlock for nostalgia's sake, and that's all this is. Um, so for those who don't know, Mad Balls and Garbage Pail Kids were two toy, well, no, well, Mad Balls was a, like a toy line. They started out, they were right. balls. But Garbage Pail Kids were definitely a toy line. Yeah. Um, so Mad Balls, they're basically these monster, they're balls shaped like monsters and zombies and gross, you know, gory things, you know, that kids in the 80s were into because it was the fucking 80s. Slime and Slime, yeah. Yeah, I, I actually had a slobulous shirt, <laughs> which mm-hmm. is one of them. Um, guy which is why the, Slimer was so popular in Ghostbusters, yeah. Yeah, um, we collected these things. We, we, you know, between me and my brother, we had a few. I mean, and we would throw them at each other or just collect them. They made comic books. There was a cartoon. Um, it got popular for a few years. Um, in recent years, here, let me get rid of that. Let me stop the screen. I have that a few years oh, ago. They, it. Okay. They, they came out with a horror movie line. Of Mad Balls. This is my Leatherface Mad Ball. He's even got a hammer in his head. I also have a Predator Mad Ball, but my fucking dog ate it. <laughs> <laughs> but um, but yeah. So Mad Balls, they were just uh, you know just gross toys, balls made shaped like monsters, and you, you had to like, be in the eighties to understand. It's, yeah, it oh, was wow. like yeah. gross out boy humor, dick and fart, or just fart grossy. Fart like jokes Nickelodeon, shit, you, know? you can't do that on television, yeah. all that stuff like that. So yeah, yeah. Um, so that was one of them. And then there was Garbage Pail Kids. Garbage Pail Kids were a parody of Cabbage Patch Kids, which were you know these very highly sought after dolls, you know, um, in the eighties. And Art Spiegelman was one of the artists on these. So Tops, the trading card company, they they did bazooka gum and baseball cards and they they specialized in trading cards Mars attacks and movie cards and stuff like that and then it would be a stick of gum so they started doing um the series called the garbage pail kids which was a parody of cabbage patch kids where only these babies were very gross out toilet humor kind of like mad magazine you know um, and they used their names like Adam Bomb was the guy that was the kid with the blowing up head. You had Large Marge and, you know, uh, all different kinds of the booger Bobby or whatever. And it's not coming out of his mouth. These were highly popular. Again, me and my they brother. They had a movie. They had a movie, a very stupid movie. And parents out. lost their shit. <laughs> the movie sucks. Yes. Even for 80s, crappy 80s standards, it's, it's bad. And not in the bad, it's good. No, it's bad and bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, and again, me and my brother had a bunch of these cards, stickers. Um, I always searched for my name, but of course, you know, my I didn't have one of those names that, you know, a common name. <laughs> John and Bob yeah. and you. Yeah. No one could pronounce my name ever in mm-hmm. every year in every year in school. I was, my name was always pronounced wrong. <laughs> but um, but yeah, ironically, I I first saw these in church. Uh, 
garbage pail. Okay, so I snuck one in or something. The, or? the kids in Sunday school were had had garbage pail. That's where I first heard of them. <laughs> but um, so anyways, Dynamite took these two franchises and stuck them in a comic book together, and it's just stupid, stupid nostalgic fun, you know. Um, it's it's an, it's an anthology stories. There's a couple of one where these like wholesome people uppity conservative folk uh move into a neighborhood they bought this brand new house but their neighbors on one side is the mad balls and the other side is the garbage pail kids and they're like oh my god i can't we move we move next to these 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 barbaric uh gross neighbors and stuff and then but then the kids end up liking them and they start playing with the playing with them and stuff and then there's like a there's like a word find there's like a where's waldo uh page where you're supposed to look for crap in a dumpster there's really gross dumpsters with the fine different gross items and stuff it's just stupid fun that i just yeah, it's like mad magazine if you, you know for those who grew up on mad magazine like me or just fans of these old stupid toys it was it was just fun you know i don't know if i'm gonna pick up the second issue but it was fun to just take a stroll down memory lane it's like oh yeah i had a slobulous shirt uh, you know, my brother had, you know, we had that mad ball. We had that mad ball. I had all these garbage pail kids cards and stuff. And so, yeah, it was just fun. Three out of five. Just stupid, stupid fun. Cool. Okay. All right. I hate to do it to you, Eli, but last book I got to do, Shang-Chi. All right. I read this. <laughs> okay. You can help me out if I get lost somewhere on it. Because I actually haven't been keeping up with the story, but. I watched the movie, so we can go. Because <laughs> yeah. this is a new run. This is a new run. This is Shang Chi and the the Ten Rings. And yeah, so, so it kind of picks up where where kind of like where the movie is. He's got the rings now. Yeah, and plus they do a little recap on the story, also kind of let you know yeah. where they were, whatever you missed. So, uh, yeah, so he has the Ten Rings. So Shang Chi has superpowers now. Never been a thing in the comics. Yes, there was one time where he could do like shadow clones and do that. But that was like something like Wanda made him do or some shit. I can't remember. But now he's got superpowers on his own. So we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, so in this book, uh, basically he's uh, his two warriors. He's got two warriors that work for him, you know, because he's still the Supreme Commander. And they're basically looking at the uh, Ten Rings. They're like, man, what if we had those rings, you know, and they're trying to talk and the rings almost kill them. You know, until Shang Chi stops him, he's like, "No, give me the rings." They're like, "What are you doing sneaking in here? If I didn't come in here, the rings would have killed you guys." You know, uh, they were like, "I'm sorry, man." I say he like, "Take him to the infirmary." You know, get him fixed up. You know, uh, so and he realized. See, the thing is, Shang Chi doesn't want to touch these rings because he thinking these rings corrupted his father. You know, like in the movie. You know, so he's just like, "I'm just gonna leave them and just not touch them." You know, but the fact that he left them there. He keeps having dreams and nightmares, you know, that the rings are like down below him. So he tries to take him back where he got to, you know, in the gate back to Talo, but the gate doesn't work anymore. Like, so he can't get to Talo to drop the rings back off. So he's just stuck with them. So he just leaves him in there, locks the door and doesn't do anything with him, even though he knows he's got like nuclear weapons, you know, in his in his house, you know. So he tries to, you know, go on a date, top golf or wherever they are. They go golf and he, you know. He's talking to his girlfriend. Oh, you know, being with me is tough. And I'm an awesome superhero, but life is hard. You know, stuff like that. So that's when he gets attacked by. Get to it. He's a fist. <laughs> Raise a fist from the movie. But now that's the thing. Shang Chi doesn't get enough credit for his rogues gallery. He actually has an awesome rogues gallery. Not just Raise a fist, but like dudes like uh stealth stalker and death dealer and these are the awesome ass names of the dudes that just show like one time they die and that's it you know so anyway he fights razor fist um uh, at the mini golf off, course at the mini golf course he chops up one of the windmills on the get golf course uh shang chi takes a shit while his hand then smacks razor fist in the face knocks him out so razor fist used to be like a two issue fight with him and shang chi back in the 70s like they used to like go at it now he takes him out like a couple pounds so <laughs> somebody got upgrade somebody didn't so anyway he gets notification that his house is under attack you know uh so you know about master ling like the the house priest or something like that. i think it's who master ling is so he's got to get to the house you know he does his superman you know who turns in you know, trying, trying to go to superhero form at least a girl and i think that's the, that's the, his girlfriend is the same lawyer chick that like his boss's niece or some shit 
from the yeah, first something, run? Yeah. Something like that. Okay, yeah. So, yeah, he goes there. He sees the house under attack, smokes coming from something like that. He sees Hydra kicking the shit out of his men. So he's like, uh-uh, this can't happen. So he dives down there, kicks the shit out of them, just goes to work. He's like, why the hell are Hydra here in my house? They're obviously, obviously after the Ten Rings, but how did they even know the Ten Rings were here or what the Ten Rings even are? So they're trying to hack into it. He goes there and kicks the shit out of that guy before he can hack into the room. Or he actually gets the room open, you know. And then he realizes this lady Iron Fan, I guess that's the chick from the, the last run, whatever. And she's yeah. like, hey, yeah, she's like, hey, Shang-Chi. Uh, yeah, since you put me out of business last uh, on the last run, I had to outsource. And when I outsourced, I told everybody where the Ten Rings were. Like, who is everybody? Those guys behind you. And basically, you got AIM, the Red Die Collective, the Inner Demons, the Hand, Hand. Gangsters, Ninjas, Terrorists. Everybody. Yeah, except the mob. No mob here. I, they need, <laughs> we need more mafia representation in the MCU. But yeah, anyway. So anyway, all these guys, even Shane, she can't take these guys. You would think until he like okay let's go with it and he did key ya bitch what the hell you know, what the hell <laughs> what's all you know kick the shit out of him. he's moving so fast it's like three of them he like kick the shit out of everybody hang and everybody catching hands the hand is catching hands you know uh kick the shit out of him in the demons and then he gets shot at by one of his own men the same guy from the beginning of the story he sold them out he's the one that sold the codes to a lady iron fan He's like, I don't trust you because when the other guy was in charge, your dad was in charge, we ran smoothly. Now look at us. Everybody's attacking us. We're under control. We're out of control right now. It's all your fault, you know. Uh, and he points the gun at him. He was like, oh, shit. So, and that's when Master Lean blasts him in the face, which we did. I, did Master Lean ever have powers before? Uh, I think back in the other dimension, didn't he? Or Did the other, he? Okay. Because Shane Chi looks surprised, like, okay, I didn't know you could do that. You know, but he kills that guy. He's like, look, if we're gonna survive this, you gotta be as ruthless as I am right now. Nobody can get to those those uh those rings right now. So he kicks the shit out of the red dot collector, kicks that shit out of red dot. He's like, Oh, hey, you met my bodyguard, Red Cannon. So it's a new guy, you know. Cool design. I like this. I didn't need to bring this guy back. I don't know who you've never seen him before, but he shoots at Shane Chi, and apparently he's fast enough that Shane Chi can almost get him. He's doing the flipping and dipping and dodging and diving, you know, uh, you know, and he sees a weak point. He's his weak point on him. He like, look at his arm. He like, if I can get to that, take the pressure point out, I can get him. So bam, hits it, and his arm falls off. Me, yeah, but Red Dot only wanted to distract him. He just wanted to distract long enough to get to the rings. And as soon as he gets to the rings, one of the rings shoot through his chest. Yeah, <laughs> dead. <laughs> so he's Got my out of weak there. spot. It's still <laughs> exactly that's what Shane you like you idiots i wasn't protecting you from the rings i was protecting the rings from you so then he takes the rings and i guess he starts flying so he can fly now yeah oh, he, he starts flies. whooping ass he gets the and glow just starts, yeah gets the glow when you got the glow it is the last dragon the body move. and just just takes out everybody <laughs> like it's nothing you know you it like the power of the glow then, and then everybody dun, just starts dun. running. <laughs> Scram, turkeys. <laughs> S- split the scene. <laughs> you know, everybody takes off running and shit like that. And he falls back to his, his uh fall back to earth. And he's basically tired and the rings fall down. And he's just like, oh shit, I'm tired. You know. Uh yeah. And the book ends. We continue. So yeah. So basically the the ring takes a heavy toll. He realized the ring is like he might be sacrificing his soul to use those rings. Yeah, so, he's yeah. struggling with, you know, an inner struggle of is he going to become evil like his dad? Right, which something that wasn't in the movie. I thought that's a nice twist. Yeah. You know, in the in the rings, he got in the movie, he got the rings and the rings became good just because he's good. In this, he's like, you know, I, I can't turn to my father. The no. corrupt, yes. The, exactly. like, like the Lord of the Rings. They can he, they have the power to corrupt or whatever. He's afraid from of the power. From a ring. From a <laughs> ring. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Symmetry. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Honestly, awesome story. It just it drops you in there. It gives you backdrop what's going on. If you know Shang-Chi movie, you, you go in this. If you know the Master of Kung Fu comics, you can jump in on this. So, yeah. This is right. fun. Yeah. I, I've been on Shang-Chi ever since What's this kid's name again? The guy who took it over? Well, I think, yeah, it's a new, I think this, I think it's a new artist on this book. The, but I like the artist because I like the old artist because he had like that anime, am, uh, anime feel. 
Yeah, Luan this, Yang, this, uh, Luan yeah, Yang. Yeah, and this artist feel like he's continuing that uh, anime feel also. I still like the other artists better, but it still has that kinetic energy where you feel it. I'll be honest with you, Eli, when, when those uh, assassins start showing up the hand and the gangsters and shit like that, I start playing the Saints You soundtrack. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, let's let's play this shit. Let's just put on the big TV and just let it hear for that do 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 for the trailer yeah all that shit was playing and then all when right. he's fighting that dude with the arm then play weak spot by wu-tang right <laughs> then play should play i need i need a shang chi playlist next time i read the shang chi book but yeah uh yeah but what you got next i think i'm booked out am i booked out i believe i'm booked out yeah i Damn. think i'm booked out. right oh no i did do a power oh i'll do it to do a power bomb shit that's Number right. One. Yeah, I thought it was one more book you had on there. Yeah. Yeah, I asked, I sort of added no because I was gonna do Shang Chi, but then I added Black Adam, so I thought I was done. Let's do a power bomb. That wrestling book that Daniel Warren Johnson is uh, doing. Um, I love Daniel Warren Johnson's artwork. I love his writing. He really has a lot of heart and um, uh, emotion to his stories. Um, he did the Beta Ray Bill book, which is one of my favorite books of last year. He did that Wonder Woman Dead Earth. He did Murder Falcon, which is one of my favorite books too. Um, and he's bringing that style, that really heart emotional, heartfelt emotional style to this pro wrestling book. And his artwork is very gritty and raw and visceral. Um, but it balances out with the very emotional drama that's going on. It's basically about this girl whose mom was a pro wrestler. She dies in the ring. Um, she grows up to try and follow in her mom's footsteps. She tries to become a pro wrestler herself. But then something weird shit happens because that's what happens in Daniel Warren Johnson's book. Some weird, wild fantasy shit happens. Some otherworldly alien being from another dimension brings her to some planet, prison planet, where he makes he wants her to wrestle in a tournament mm. a tag team tournament on another planet only this time the wrestling is real she's like oh you're gonna be i want you to pick a tag team partner and you're gonna wrestle for the belt and if you win the belt i'll bring your mom back to life because i'm a necromancer so she's like okay um but do you know wrestling is scripted the 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 winners are are you know it's 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 all pre pre thought out before the winners are it's a scripted format. He's like it's not really real. He's like, Oh, you're joking. And <laughs> mm-hmm. so he doesn't think he doesn't know that it's real. And she's just this scrawny little girl. So she tries to go um she tries to go recruit this other tag team wrestler, the one who was in the ring with her mom when she died. He actually did the, the move on her and he feels guilty about it for killing her mom in the ring, even though she was, you know, there was a misstep and he has accidentally killed her. So he's been feeling guilty about it ever since his name is Cobra son. So she tries to recruit Cobra son. So, yo, I need a, you know, I need a tag team partner for this alien wrestling tournament. There's, Oh, you're talking about that necro guy, the necromancer. Yeah. He already tried to recruit me. Yeah. I'm not doing that shit. And you're not going to be my tag team partner anyways, because you're too small. And you barely know anything and kind of, you know, she's like, well, fine, I'm going to do it without you. I'll go find my own wrestling partner. And she kind of storms out. Then she gets a phone call from her dad and she's like, hi, dad. And um, then it cuts to her dad and it's actually that tag team guy, Cobra son, who's always wearing a mask. He's a luchador. Oh, always wore a mask. So she did not, she doesn't know that that was her dad. So that's I am your up. father. <laughs> yes, that's so her dad. Her father killed her mother. Killed her mom. Actually, killed her mom. It's like, like that Daniel Warren Johnson shit is dramatic. <laughs> <laughs> I was not expecting that. I was like, oh shit. <laughs> so yeah, another four out of five for me. I, I like I said, I'm a big fan of his work, and this is just him showing his love for pro wrestling, and like some of the action is just great. Like he's very kinetic, visceral brutality well you you seen the beta ray bill didn't you the book i didn't but i'm pretty sure it's on marlon limited i'm, I'm yeah. gonna get on it i'm gonna get very on it, so yeah. raw gritty action i love his style you know very uh yeah it's not clean it's not slick it's not refined it's very dirty 
<laughs> <laughs> Old and dirty. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, yeah, uh, appreciate everybody. If you listen this long, if you like, share, subscribe. I know this was one of our longer episodes. Like I said, we had a lot of stuff we had to knock out. Uh, actually, a lot of topics we cut that I'm just not going to even deal with. I might deal yeah. with them next week. You know. Yeah, I, I didn't even get to ca- talk about the Chucky trailer. But... <laughs> oh, the Chucky trailer? Yeah, I, didn't, I didn't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> or the new Ninja Turtle book that's coming out. <laughs> Yeah, like there's a we, lot of shit at San Diego that I was. Yeah, like, like I said, oh, this was Comic Con this weekend. Like we yeah. technically we could have did a show just on that one, but you know, uh, it's, it's other stuff I wanted to talk about, so I didn't want to yeah. just talk about Comic Con. You know, uh, join us next week. I don't know what's happening. I'm pretty sure something will happen. Or we'll find something to talk about, or the topics we didn't talk about this week, we'll talk about it next week. Either way, we got stuff. So okay. yeah, talk about all the ninja stories you want to talk about next week. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Until then, this is Leroy. This is Eli. We'll talk to you guys next week. Same bully time, same bully channel. Everything I do is magic. Being black is beautiful. Yeah. I'm tricky, so what you expect? Look. Uh, Michael Jackson, the shoes. Barack Obama, the jewels. Uh-huh. Over with me, the cool. With a Serena, a tool. Uh-huh. Hey, the sick is the flu. BB can give them the blues. Uh-huh. Jay and Diddy the moves. Ain't no way I can lose. Uh-huh. Pulling up. Looking like black magic. Black magic. Uh-huh. Pulling up. Feeling like black magic. Black magic. Uh-huh. Pulling up. Looking like black magic. Black magic. Uh-huh. Pulling up. Looking like black magic. Black magic. Uh-huh. Pulling up. Looking like black magic. Black magic. Black magic. Uh-huh. Black magic. Black magic. I'm from under the bottom with the only shot that you get is from rifles and pills. Living life like it's good times, but we didn't have a penny though. Blowing up down the mic like I'm JJ. Used to hoop with LaMarcus and Baby. Now we plot every day on the payday. Get that bag, that big bag, and my bitch want to hurt me. Every day scheming and rubbing my hands together like I'm bird, man. I want me 22 million, put that on the house. I got too many babies to sleep on the couch. Got the juice with no shadow of doubt. God first and hard work, that's what I'm about. Look, a nigga really here first. Nigga make it play, make it bread work. Nigga sleep and get him out the bed first. Wanna see results, do the lead work. Is it overthinking, make your head hurt? You don't overcome if you ain't scared first. Gotta keep it waving. Niggas be full gays and can't be acting lazy. Gotta feed them babies, gotta feed them babies. Uh, hey. Michael Jackson, the shoes. Barack Obama the jewels, uh-huh Off a whip the cool With a Serena or two, uh-huh Hey, the sick is the flu BB can give them the blues, uh-huh Jay and Diddy the moves Ain't no way I can lose, uh-huh Pulling up, looking like Black magic, black magic, uh Pulling up, feeling like Black magic, black magic, uh Pulling up, looking like Black magic, black magic, uh Pulling up, looking like Black magic that's young four five. Say you don't know him, he on fire. Go go harder than James. Gonna talk this shit like Richard Pryor. Put purpose on my verses. Keep my Angelo like Maya. Yo, Muhammad Ali, I'm the greatest. I'm killing this shit like OJ. Get away with it. Young Ada, baby, when real was real. I'm not a flop, I got skills for real. Didn't have my daddy around as a youngin', so I looked up to Uncle Phil and Bill. Wanted to be a Huxable. That's what I'm driven, that's what I hustle for. Brown nigga kicking black magic, yeah. Black magic, yeah. Gotta keep coming strong, gotta kick down them doors. Struggles and bad days, don't wanna see them no more. Wouldn't take it back, cause it's part of my story. Tell the devil, get back, time for me to show the world my glory. Uh, for real. Michael Jackson, the shoes, Barack Obama, the jewels. Uh-huh. Over with me, the cool, with a Serena or two. Uh-huh. Hey, the sick is the flu, BB can give them the blues. Uh-huh. Jay and Diddy the moves, ain't no way I can lose. Uh-huh. Pulling up, looking like black magic, black magic. Uh, pulling up, feeling like black magic, black magic. Uh, pulling up, looking like black magic, black magic. Uh, pulling up, looking like black magic, black magic. Uh. Magic, 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 magic,